flashback to my fifth grade self. I'm 10 years old and I'm craving a slice of chocolate cake after school. With no sweets in the house, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I pull out the stand mixer my mom always used and grab the ingredients needed for the Betty Crocker's chocolate cake mix. I crack the eggs in, precisely measure the oil and water, and dump the dry mix into the bowl. After all, it's a few simple steps, almost foolproof, that nobody can mess up, except for me, of course. Before plugging in the mixer, I forgot to check if the mixer's speed was off. However, it was on turbo mode, and within a matter of seconds, every crevice in the kitchen had cake batter in it. I stood there in complete shock, with chocolate covering my face, and started to cry. I don't know if it was because I was scared to see my parents' dumbfound reaction, or because my chances of having chocolate cake went to zero. We've all experienced a cake batter hurricane at one point or another. But the difference is how we handle it. Do we succumb to one bad experience, or do we push ourselves to explore new things, even if it may end up resulting in a cake batter hurricane? Ever since a young age, I always enjoyed science and math because they were solely logic-based and had nothing to do with personal opinion, things that were up to one's interpretation. I always avoided my English homework and never set aside time to truly understand the content of the class solely because I did not like it or think I was good at it. Many of us neglect opportunities to explore new avenues simply because we have a negative stigma or perspective on the topic. For some, this may be an art class. For others, it might be learning how to cook for the first time. Up until 10th grade, I was the typical left-brained individual. I believed I was only destined to excel in the STEM field because of my existing bias towards things involving creativity. It was not until I found my passion for baking that my perspective on where I fell in society changed. Baking combines both creativity and precision, which utilizes both your left and right brain thinking. While it's safe to say that my first few attempts at baking were not visually appealing or appetizing, being able to find new passions and talents that were once hidden has truly really been a liberating experience. A common psychology that many of us know is the myth between the left and right brain. Those who find themselves excelling in analytical thinking and logical reasoning will find themselves as more of a left-brained individual. Things such as mathematics and foreign languages are perfect examples of left-brained thinking. While on the other hemisphere of the brain, those who find themselves imagining things, using creative thinking, and approaching things with a holistic view will find themselves as more of a right-brained individual. Things such as art and literature are great examples of right brain thinking. According to a study conducted by Forbes magazine, over 35 million people from 305 different countries, they found that 70% of participants believed they excel that they excelled in only left brain activities or right brain activities. This left them neglecting activities in the hemisphere of the brain that they believed they did not excel in. For example, if someone excelled in mathematics, because of their existing biases towards their strengths in the STEM field, they both consciously and unconsciously avoided activities relating to their weaknesses. All right, by raise of hands, who here thinks that they're left-brained? All right, all right, all right. And who here thinks that they're right-brained? Okay, I see that, I see that. And who here just doesn't know at all? You can be honest. Thank you for the honesty. Well, unfortunately, you guys are all wrong. Whether you chose left brain or you chose right brain is all because society labels us in a box and forces us to conform to what we're good at. Everyone is afraid of failure and conforming to our strengths creates a safety net, limiting our opportunities to grow into more open-minded people. Conformity is the reason that many of us struggle with our personal growth and identity in this world today. We become so comfortable with what we're good at that we neglect things that make us feel slightly uncomfortable simply because we're not good at it or familiar with it. Harnessing the power of discomfort is a hard lesson that I had to learn and still learning to this day. However, to simply be the most open-minded version of ourselves, we must be uncomfortable. 
We must challenge ourselves to explore new things that are out of our comfort zone and strengths in order to be the best version of ourselves. According to Naomi Hesling, a researcher from the Netherlands, she states that 98% of the population lives in their comfort zone, while only 2% of the population is truly living outside of their comfort zone and exploring new things without limits. For some, discomfort might be public speaking. For others, it might be overcoming the fear of talking to your crush. But something we can all challenge ourselves to do is to explore our so-called weaknesses. If you're more right-brained, challenge yourself to take that difficult math class or play a game of Sudoku every day. If you're more left-brained, take an art class or buy the ingredients you need and make your favorite dessert. Taking little steps to push ourselves out of our comfort zone every day can help us find new talents and avenues that we may not even know we possess. When I first started baking, the number of times I replaced salt for sugar or forgot to turn turbo speed off was, parent, was, <laughs> was crazy. But, but we must push ourselves out of our comfort zone to find new things that excite us. When I first started baking, the number of times I replaced salt for sugar or forgot to turn turbo speed off was worrisome. I often blame myself for not being creative or a lack of imagination as to why my dessert turned out horrendous. When in reality, mistakes are bound to happen, especially when it's something new that you're exploring. We owe ourselves the opportunity to push ourselves out of our comfort zone and find new things that excite us. I promise I did get better at baking after years of visually calling pastries, blackened brownies, and powdered sugar bag explosions. Pushing myself to explore this unknown avenue that's been hidden all of my life has helped me continuously live outside of my comfort zone. Last year, I was able to start a nonprofit business called Desserts by Matthew, where I sold chocolate truffles to raise money awareness for the Kawasaki Disease Research Center at Brady's Children's Hospital in San Diego. Kawasaki Disease is a rare pediatric infectious disease that causes inflammation in the coronary arteries of the heart. As a survivor of Kawasaki disease, I was able to raise over $7,000 and educate thousands of people across five different states about the symptoms of Kawasaki disease. Three years ago, I believed I possessed not an ounce of creativity, but with a little bit of passion and an open mind, I was able to discover a whole new world of activities and talents that I did not know I possessed. Baking has helped me realize that the left and right brain thinking is only but a myth because everyone possesses talents on both sides. Before I end this talk tonight, I want you to take one important lesson with you. Even when a cake batter hurricane unveils or you fail so hard that you're past the point of laughing, to keep going and to explore the areas of your life that you've left untouched because we owe ourselves the opportunity to find new passions and talents that we may not even know we have. Thank you.